flake foods for aquarium fish were invented in the middle of the last century. And what a difference this invention has made. Before they came along, pet fish were fed live food from rivers and streams, a food source that wasn't always accessible. The invention of flake and other dried foods made life in a fish tank a whole lot easier. Just a few sprinkles and dinner is served. It's not much like the live water fleas or blood worms the fish would feed on in their natural environment, but it contains the nutrients and vitamins they need. These dried tidbits can be supersized to appeal to larger fish that prefer to chow down on something more substantial. Each formulation consists of up to 40 different ingredients. The main components are fish meal, wheat flour, soy and paprika oils. They also add food colorant because fish are drawn to certain colors. They follow a precise recipe and measure the ingredients carefully. They blend the smaller components together first. They include lecithin, a blending and thickening agent also found in foods humans consume, and calcium for bone strength. The main ingredients, the fish meal, flours, and oils, are piped from silos into big tanks and mixed with hot water. They add the smaller premix and blend everything together to produce a thick slurry. They spray the slurry onto the surface of a series of rolling heated drums. As it flows over these drums, the slurry cooks and dries into a thin film that's like a paper sheet. As the sheet rolls off, a long rotating blade chops it up to produce big flakes. They're pretty chunky at this point and will need to be broken up into bite-sized versions. Next, they fall down a chute and into a plastic bag. A worker transfers them by the bag full to the next conveyor. The various colors represent the different formulations. The green are veggie flakes, while the red are protein-based. They all head into a spiraling device known as the tumbler. It spins to toss the flakes around. This mixes and breaks them into smaller flakes. After several minutes in the tumbler, the flakes fall onto a series of screens to grade them by size, small, medium, and large. They land in separate bins, now mixed and sorted by size. Meanwhile, the production of fish food sticks is underway. Machinery presses a food mash through the small holes of an extruder plate to create spaghetti-like strings. As the strings exit, Rotating knives cut them into sticks. The sticks dry and solidify. A worker routinely examines them for size and form. The next worker wheels a hopper full of flakes above a chute and removes the trap door. The mix falls down one floor onto the packaging line. At the same time, a column of empty cans heads toward the flakes. The fish food flakes fall through special openings that funnel them into the cans. Machinery cuts out aluminum foil caps and slaps them on the tops of the containers. Hot circular irons then seal the caps to the cans. This conveyor belt is also a computerized scale which keeps track of the amount of product in the cans. Then devices spin by to twist plastic lids onto the threaded rims of the cans. As the cans pass by on a carousel, applicators press glue-backed product labels onto them. And these fish food flakes are done. In its various formulations, Dried fish food offers a range of feeding options. Some contain additives that enhance the growth and color of the fish. Others are geared to a fish's specific tastes, because even pet fish can be discriminating diners.